time for another Nunchaku video. You see me standing at the site of one of today's experiments. I'm going to focus on a unique advantage that this weapon has over its competing devices. I think you'll be impressed, uh, and if you're one of the Nunchaku's critics, which is a fine position to take, but if you are, then I challenge you to admit that you never knew this was a thing when you formed your opinion about the Nunchaku. Actually, I don't think there's any denying, not logically, that that applies to several things I've shown about this weapon. Things that, for instance, uh, Shad over at Shadowversity hasn't touched on in four videos covering hours on this weapon. Here's where I'm filming, one of my favorite skateboarding spots. You can see downtown Dallas. And check this out, look how little room there is between the coconut and the very unforgiving steel, which I do not want to scratch my made in Japan white oak nunchaku on. A first demonstration is about something I've shown before, how the nunchaku is unparalleled for going from 0 to 100, its acceleration. In a later demonstration in this video, I'm going to show you a new combat application for it. A critical one, I would say. First though, as I have shown before, but not quite like this, can your equivalent length straight stick go from full concealment to full power in the blink of an eye? I'm 48 years old, so I don't have a lot of fast twitch left in my muscles, and look how quick that was. That really, really was quick. And if it didn't seem very powerful, let's break out the coconuts. And remember, this is a freestanding coconut. There's no smash effect here. There's no backing board or brick pushing back up against it, helping me do more damage. Recall also that I had very little margin for error to hit this in the sweet spot without hitting that metal fence. And, drum roll, complete breakage. And look how clean that break is. I did not know what was going to happen here. And that was the first take. So let's think about self-defense. Would it be convenient to have a full-length bludgeon that can be completely hidden and deployed with scary power in the blink of an eye? I think any reasonable person would say yes. I also think any reasonable person would note that what I just did is literally impossible with a straight stick of equivalent length. You would not be able to hide it, and even if you did hide it, shove it down your pants leg or inside a coat or something, you could not possibly deploy it so quickly. Or are you going to hide it behind your back or behind your leg? It, it's going to be really, really obvious that you're holding something. I brought both my chucks, so I just had to think of something to do with them before I leave. Uh, but they do help make a serious point here. Two, actually, for one thing, because of the ease of acceleration that this tool has, I would argue it's easier to use with your offhand than a straight stick in terms of generating power and therefore doing damage via acceleration. As I've said in the past, millennia worth of history in agriculture tells us without question a flail is more efficient than a straight stick. Put a pin in that while I line these two up. This is how much striking distance I can wear on my person completely hidden without either one of those encumbering my movements at all. Back to the offhand, left hand in my case, if it's a more efficient tool, which it without question is, then it's going to be easier to use with your weaker, less coordinated side. Interesting, and let's be honest, Nunchaku critics, that's something you never realized. Now, none of what I've just said and shown means the chucks are a superior tool. If you're going to do an actual comprehensive analysis, you have to take this into account. Forget the gym bag in this picture, there's no weapons in it. Could you possibly hide two full-size batons with the clothing that I'm wearing, because that's basically what I'm doing at the moment, and walking unencumbered. And in real life, outside of fantasy land, actual self-defense, and think about the old world, the options you had, especially if you were a poor Okinawan, or anything like that, skateboarding to the site of my next demo, by the way, uh, that really, really matters. One thing I've heard from countless people in the different weapons groups I participate in, comments on my videos and stuff is, oh, the walking stick is better. Or like Shad, this big stick, look, it's better. Carry a stick like that around with you all day, just once. You can't carry anything that requires two hands, not without leaving your stick behind. You can't climb anything. You have to constantly put it down and pick it back up. This is the site of our next experiment. Things like that really matter in real life. You want to carry an impact weapon, let's leave knives out of it because we're talking about an impact weapon context. That's what you choose to carry for defense. You want to carry something that you can defend yourself with, but that doesn't get in your way. You're not going to a brawl. 
I don't know why people have so much trouble understanding this. That's the thing with Nunchaku. It's the world's original collapsing baton. It's the collapsing technology of the day. Why did people carry them in the old days? For the exact same set of reasons that people carry metal telescoping batons today. I guess I lied to you guys. I'm going to show you several unique advantages that the Chucks have. You saw me practicing that south to north, right? 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock swing with the straight stick earlier. Let's compare these two weapons in that respect. New Coconut was very unimpressed with that, so I'm gonna have to try again. You might have noticed that hurt my hand a bit. Now we're talking very flush strike, dead center, on a coconut that's already been softened up, so to speak, right? Because it's the second hit. It feels brand new. I'm sure there's some hairline fractures or something, but it, basically my hand feels brand new after two shots. So let's compare. I got covered in coconut water, and as you saw, complete breakage of the coconut. I'm really soaked. Now, the south to north shot is not a very common one, right? Well, there's a reason for that, because it's so awkward with normal weapons, whether it be a sword or a straight stick. There's a reason no fighting stick tradition in the entire world makes much of that angle of attack, if they use it at all. Pay attention, what's going on here besides gravity fighting against me is that the inertia of the straight stick itself works against me. You might have noticed with the nunchaku, I swung down and then up, so let's be fair and try that with the straight stick. And I'll try it more than once. I'm gonna fiddle here for a little bit, and I tried as hard as I could, trust me, I determined it was still fully intact. What I'm going to talk about here doesn't just apply to this angle of attack. The thing about Chucks is, every angle of attack is a full power attack. As I'm demonstrating with the most awkward angle there is. If you want to think about actual combat, when you compare these two implements, then you have to take this into account. Very solid strike, as you heard. Multiple hits, trying to break this thing, which broke so easily with the nunchaku. Speeding up the footage to try to save us some time. And as you'll see, the results are quite unimpressive. The physical properties of the straight stick hurt you when trying to be used this way. The physical properties of the chucks assist you. And look how well this thing is holding up. I mean, it got a crack, but with my hands, there's not a prayer I'm going to be able to open that up. Look how far I've backed away after the strike, and there's still a large piece of the coconut in the air. You see that? Every angle, every point on the compass or the clock face is full power with this tool, with a flail. And the reason it's so much better at this vertical up strike is the same reason it's much better at something else. And here's what I was originally going to make this video about. Nunchakus do something that a sling does. Now, in a way, so does a stick, but you're going to see the key difference. And the sling, invented in prehistory, super useful because it gives you a wider arc, lets you launch your projectile much further, of course. And here's how that works. And I think we all get this, so I'm not going to go into school teacher mode here. It's simple enough, really. And this is what I was referring to earlier. Like, does a straight stick benefit from the dynamics at play here? I mean, not really. Maybe theoretically, but no, because there's not a string, right? You don't get that actual tug effect. Now, you get completely different advantages once you actually make impact, uh, in fact, like Shad covered in his most recent video. But you don't get this, and that's why the Chucks outperformed the stick so significantly in the test that I did. Here's the freeze frame of the exact instant after I swung down and was about to swing up. The striking stick naturally kept going after I stopped moving the grip stick. And when I change direction, the striking stick has to catch up, or I should say it naturally catches up. Look at the extra arc that we're getting there, the extra movement as it catches up to the stick I'm holding. It accelerates greatly in that effort to catch up. And obviously with a straight stick here, you saw same position, you don't get any of that benefit. And that's the advantage I was talking about or teasing at the start of the video, the comeback swing. If you swing across your body in a tennis forehand-like motion and then have to immediately go into a backhand, the chucks are so superior it's not even funny. I've shown this many times on my videos. There. And of course it doesn't just apply to horizontal left to right forehand to backhand, as I showed with the coconut experiment, right? Even if you're going from straight down to straight up, 
If you're ever reversing your strike, this weapon works for you instead of against you. I'm standing in super muddy ground, by the way, but anyway, I'll try to really highlight it here in this sequence. Could the ability to come back from a miss or a feigned miss with extra speed and power be of use in combat? Gee, I wonder. While I show one more example, let me transition to something else I bet you didn't know these things could do. Stop and think about this. You see me getting ready to defend myself from you. I'm holding this very short stick, right? You might find out that that stick is more than twice as long as you thought. Not just twice as long, more than twice as long because you have to add the length of the rope. I bet most of you never thought about that sneaky strike. You don't have to advertise with flashy twirling. Look, I'm holding a pair of nunchaku, right? And think about lighting conditions and how much you show it and how much you shield with your body. It's just gonna look like when it's collapsed like that, they might well assume it's just a small stick. As long as I was standing in this mud patch, I figured I would do some kata on there. Good chance to train. If you want to actively actually train, you should train on different kinds of ground. And just like I was shuffling around while swinging the chucks earlier. You don't develop a practical skill by just standing around or maybe doing test swings against the stationary target for your YouTube video. You can't even make out the chucks here, but it doesn't matter. Look at my hand and my body positioning. This is all in a fraction of a second. Everything I'm doing is loading that chuck for the comeback swing. This is just a nifty thing about it. If this was a straight stick, its inertia would be hurting me, right? It would work against me, like I've said, especially from traveling one direction. To get it to reverse, there's no assist of any kind. Quite the opposite. And that goes back to kind of the point that this all revolves around. The 0 to 100, the comeback swing, it's all about the acceleration. You want to see a picture of me all bloodied up? Just hold on. Some people understand that academically, if they grudgingly will admit it, but have they thought about how that actually benefits you in terms of fighting? Here's the thing, uh, when I was skateboarding down to the spot where I did this part of the filming, this is one of my favorite places right here, and I'm going way faster than it looks, trust me. See that spot of dirt right there? Well, that came back to haunt me, but not while making this video. But you know, I had chucks on me in my pocket while doing this, and it made me think of Thrashin' the movie, remember that? Of course you do. And the joust scene where they were skateboarding and swinging at each other with flails. And the weapons looked like half of a nunchuck with a boxing glove attached, or a sandbag of some kind. And so I figured this is my chance to live my childhood dream. So while racing along, I pulled the chucks out of my pocket and did a few swings. Actually, an instructive example of how easily deployable they are. But what happened weeks after I put this video in the can is this on the same spot. I hit that little patch of dirt, but it was really wet. Even though it wasn't wet that day, it was like silt, you know? Uh, so I got the only second worst skateboarding injury of my adult life. And so I won't be doing any weapons videos for at least a little while, a week or two. <laughs> Gotta heal up. My right hand is uh, inflamed. My left arm, you can see, and my left hip has the worst bruise I've ever had. And that includes playing rugby in college. Anyway, back to our subject. I hope you learned a little bit there. There's just a lot more to the nunchaku than many people think. Doesn't mean you have to think it's a good weapon or a great weapon. But if you think it's terrible, you probably have a very superficial understanding of it. You don't understand its frighteningly easy power generation and how that can be applied in practical, real-world scenarios. Like here, from behind the back to fight finishing instant hit. Or go south to north, attack from an angle that nobody expects. Without the awkwardness most implements experience in that scenario. Bait them into charging in by purposely missing with a forehand swing. Stick Defense 101 is charge in after that swing when they have no choice but to try to hit you with a backhand because normally that's weaker and slower, but it's the exact opposite with this tool. Full power from any angle, devastating on the comeback. Thanks for watching.